Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins, and uh, welcome to Financial Juneteenth. Uh, this is where we teach economic empowerment through financial literacy, uh, entrepreneurship, and combating workplace discrimination. Uh, in, in case you don't know, I have a PhD in finance, uh, and basically, you know, my goal is to really talk about money in every every context so that we can understand it. Uh, we have a lot of bloggers uh, besides myself. I'm not the only person who writes on, on the platform, but at the same time, uh, the tone and the theme is designed to be one where um, basically anytime money comes up in a capitalist society, uh, we want to understand money in all of its contexts. You know, it's almost like understanding, uh, understanding minerals and nutrients. Um, you know, if you really understand the elements, you know that they appear in all different kinds of forms and not just uh, specific ones. So the point here is that um, I, I wanted to explain sort of why I chose to write about Kevin Hart and uh, the comedian and his issue uh, that he has with dark skinned black women. Now, um, first of all, I'll say that uh, Kevin Hart, I think, is um, has done an amazing job of really building the kind of career that uh, it has become pretty much iconic. Uh, I went to the movies and I saw just, you know, Negroes lined up all out the door to see Kevin Hart perform. Um, I think it was uh, Stand Up and then he did the movie with Ice Cube. And I was actually proud of that movie because that was one of the few times where you saw uh, two black men come together in leading roles for, uh, for a film and that actually became number one at the box office. And in addition to that, uh, usually when there's a cop and a funny sidekick, the funny sidekick is black, but the cop is white. The serious, you know, courageous cop is, is white, and the cowardly, hilarious sidekick is black. Well, in this case, you have both. Uh, so I was actually uh, impressed and proud of what that film did for black men. Uh, so uh, now with that being said, though, uh, I think we got to dig real deep in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, figuring out why Kevin uh, feels compelled to uh, make the remarks that he made about dark-skinned black women. Uh, in case you don't know, uh, he made a joke about dark-skinned black women having worse credit than light-skinned black women. And then at the end of the tweet, he says, uh, he mentioned something about dark-skinned hoes, LOL. And, you know, I mean, that was four years ago. And that just tells you how fast his career has, has escalated because four years ago, uh, he wasn't at the, near the level that he is right now. And I don't think he'd ever make a comment like that today. Um, now, Kevin, um, this first, the first thing that, that bothers me a little bit about this is that uh, Kevin never really apologized for what he said, um, and in fact, he he doubled down and reiterated his decision not to apologize. Um, you know, in a recent interview with Playboy, which I thought was a real problem. Uh, I think Kevin should have let it go or come out and did what he, he was supposed to do the first time, which is to say, I'm sorry, uh, because <clears throat> you know I think he he probably is is reflecting on that time, maybe uh, I'd say before say 1995 or maybe a little later than that. Um, where it was okay to make fun of dark-skinned people. I mean, if you look at Damon Wayans and other people, you remember those comedians. I mean, Damon Wayans had a whole, he, he damn near built half his career off of a list of, you know, you're so black, that kinds of jokes. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate because uh, there are casualties for these jokes, and, and people are really hurt by these jokes. Even people who are not dark-skinned are hurt by the jokes. Uh, the people who are, who are dark, uh, their pain is something that uh, I think most, of, most people who are not dark don't understand. Um, and I understand it a little bit better than most, I would say, because uh, my, my goddaughters are dark-skinned black women, uh, beautiful black women. And, uh, but, you know, they, I, I, I found out at one point when I talked to one of my girls, I said, um, I said, do you have issues? You know, do, do you, did you have self-esteem problems growing up as a dark-skinned woman? Because I never thought about it, you know, in, in the sense of, I, I knew that colorism was an issue, but I never thought about it with her because she always seemed happy. She always seemed to be confident. She always seemed to have high self-esteem. But she actually told me that it was very hurtful and that it really did affect her self-esteem. And then I talked to some other uh, friends that I have who, who are darker and I asked them about their experience. And it's kind of pervasive, kind of consistent that that uh, that there's kind of this this latent um, this latent discomfort and pain and anxiety uh, that that we foster when we feed into this light skin dark skin thing. Um, and in fact, I, I have a, the other side of my family. I, I was adopted, uh, in case you don't know. Uh, but um, you know, the other side of my family has a lot of light skin black people, and and the, so the colorism was there too. Where I've, I've heard you know certain people say things about light skin versus dark skin that wouldn't be acceptable today. Now, mind you, I, I don't necessarily hold animosity for what they said, say in the '60s, '70s, and '80s. But I think it is important for us to educate and grow out of that. Um, you know, the other thing about Kevin's remarks that I think 
uh, were just real interesting and real problematic uh, was the fact that he said that he wouldn't wouldn't apologize to black women for the dark skin uh, black woman comment, but he would never make jokes about gays and lesbians because they would destroy his career. And I think that's interesting because that goes into, um, you know, this sort of political football that occurs in the United States. I mean, in the U.S., and I talk about this in my book, Black American Money. Also, we talk about it on Financial Juneteenth all the time as a teaching point. Um, you know, America is a capitalist democracy. So if you want to understand how America works, you look at two things. You look at money and you look at politics, right? It's uh, economic power and political power. And really, it's getting to the point in the U.S. where economic power is starting to take over political power. If you look at the way the laws are being changed, you know, treating corporations like they're a person. And most politicians on Capitol Hill have been bought and, you know, bought and paid for. Um, you know, you really see that money kind of runs everything. And actually, unfortunately, uh, that's going to be the demise of the United States. That, you know, in case you're wondering, you are on a sinking economic ship. Most economic indicators say that our future uh, would not be as bright as our past and our country is really headed uh, in a nasty spiral. But uh, but that's neither here nor there. But what I will say, though, is that uh, when you look at this political football, particularly in the last, say, six years, um, since ironically, since we got our black president, uh, black power has not really escalated. It's really gay and lesbian power that's escalated the most in the United States, which is fine. It is what it is. I'm not, I, I you know, it's funny. Somebody asked me uh, how I felt about gay marriage, and 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 I was, I said, well, I'm actually quite neutral. I said because a gay person has never proposed to me, um, and so I'm not real picky about what other people are doing in their bedroom. So I'm not big or more small on that issue, but at the same time, I'm very big on the issue of black empowerment and black people and, and also black women because I've got so many black women in my family who raised me and shaped me and molded me. I was molded more so by black women than anybody else. Um, and so when you talk about this issue, when you talk about Kevin, uh, you have to ask yourself, you know, why is it that you feel that you have to fold and bend to the master who beat you the hardest? That's effectively what's going on. I mean, you've got Hollywood power. Uh, gay, we know that, that there's, a, there's a lot of gay power in Hollywood, a lot of Jewish power in Hollywood. So people don't, you know, comedians, hip hop artists, etc. won't say anything negative about gay people or Jewish people. But yet black people, their own people, they're, they, many of them are very quick to sell out their own people for a dollar bill. And, and so, you know, when you talk about who to blame for this kind of ignorance, I mean, obviously you can blame, blame the structure, the power structure itself. You can also look at the artist and the decision they make to uh, express their quote unquote creative freedom, which I don't know if it's entirely, uh, entirely free uh, because it's more corporate speech than it is free speech. But how they use that little bit of free speech they have to really disrespect their people, because there's nobody, there's no group that's more disrespected in hip hop music, especially than the black woman. Uh, you know, this this idea that we somehow got into the habit of referring to black women, uh, particularly in hip hop, as bitches and hoes all the time is ridiculous. And and the thing is that you see a spillover from hip hop culture into sports culture, into entertainment, etc. So if you look at the end of Kevin's remark where he makes that comment, dark skin hoes, L O L. Now, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I don't think it would have been as cool to call dark dark skinned women, black women, any woman, a hoe. But now it's like bitches and hoes, that terminology is just very common, uh, largely because we accept it, because black women accept it, unfortunately. And so it's kind of become a mess. So uh, I, you know, I think that we have to really think about that from a financial standpoint and really understand that sometimes you got to resist this stuff and you can't keep selling out to the highest bidder. You can't keep selling out to the issue that has the most political and economic power. You got to have some point where your integrity kicks in and makes you say, you know what, I've made $10 million. If I don't make the next 10 million because I've held on to my integrity, I'm going to be okay with that. Uh, money is supposed to liberate you. It is not supposed to enslave you. But if you go to Hollywood and you look at entertainment, you see a whole lot of high paid slaves in entertainment. I mean, you talk about uh, some of these guys that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars who are still afraid to speak up. And I'm talking mainly about Michael Jordan, and Jay-Z, to be honest with you. Those are the ones who come to the top of my, my list mentally. Uh, th these are individuals with hundreds of millions of dollars who are afraid to take on controversial issues or afraid to stand up for the black community because it might cost them money. And my question is, what are you afraid of? I mean, what are, what are you really afraid? I mean, you got you have four hundred, five hundred million dollars in the bank. What are you afraid of? That that's what I don't really get. So so you know that may that's what I kind of thought about when I saw Kevin sort of say that he would bow and bend and fold to gay and lesbian issues, but yet with black women, not only will he not fold, but
but he won't even apologize for what he said, uh, you know, in a very hurtful set of remarks. Uh, the last thing that I have to say about Kevin that, that just, you know, this is this is really for the psychoanalysts out there, and I, I'd love to hear your comments on this. Um, brother, you're making fun of dark-skinned women, and you are as dark as they come. I mean, you've got, you know, I mean, th th this precious dark African skin, I mean, just what the what is wrong with you i mean seriously you know no don't get me wrong see here's the thing i like about kevin his 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 comedy is that he's very reflective about the pain he's experienced he experienced as a young person uh you saw that 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 fuels his brilliance the same way it did for richard pryor richard pryor had you know a hor or a horrific upbringing and he translated that into something productive um i re i respect that you know um and i respect kevin uh in his right to make money but I don't respect his right to make money at our expense. And, you know, you really got to wonder about a guy who would make a joke like that and then not apologize for the joke, even though he's dark. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that he has relatives that are probably as dark as he is. Um, and, and that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, that that really is kind of the epitome of, of, of just frightening self-hatred. And so um, maybe he needs a psychologist. You know, just because people are rich, famous, and powerful doesn't mean that they're smart or healthy uh, psychologically. And I think Kevin might need to do some uh, evolving as a human being to understand why he would disrespect dark-skinned black women, but yet he's dark-skinned himself. And if I'm not mistaken, he has a daughter. Um, now, I don't know if, how dark his daughter is. It seems like Kevin's new girlfriend is, is lighter than he is and taller than he is. So maybe those are the two things that he hates the most about himself. He's seeking in the woman that he chooses to mate with. Um, but beyond that, you know, this is not any sort of animosity toward Kevin. Uh, I know people who know Kevin and Will Packard and all these guys that, that really built this amazing empire. But I just encourage them to be more conscientious, more thoughtful about the things they say. Um, in fact, it, it, they can email me if they want to, um, and, and I'll be glad to help them. I spoke to LL Cool J once when he got into controversy, and 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 I think sometimes our entertainers need to be uh, educated a little bit so that they use their power for good and not for evil, or at least not have it misinterpreted that way. Um, uh, that's all I want to say about that. Uh, thank you for checking this out. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Financial Juneteenth. So until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. I am gone. Peace.